send a link to the recording to all of the people who registered for the webinar. Um, we're hosting the webinar today in meeting mode because we like to encourage interaction between our network members. So please take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat and we will be holding time at the end for on-camera Q&A where you can use the raise hand function. We're hoping to have some discussion uh, about today's topic. Um, if you do have a question as we proceed through the slides, we would also like you to use the Q&A function. Um, so there are a lot of options for interacting with us and we'll try to monitor all of them. But just to recap, um, the preferred method for Q&A is the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. And we will also have time at the end of the session for live discussion. Uh, next slide, please. All right, I'd like to start off by reading the promise of community action. You're welcome to come off mic and read it with me if you'd like, or you can just listen. The promise of community action. Community action changes people's lives, embodies the spirit of hope, improves communities, and makes America a better place to live. We care about the entire community and we are dedicated to helping people help each other and themselves. Next slide. All right, I'm going to turn it over to our capable presenters from the Environmental Protection um, Agency's Energy Star Home Upgrade Service and allow them to introduce themselves. Thanks, Amy. Um, I just want to mention, I cannot see the slides, but I will start with introducing myself. Uh, my name is Taylor Jansell. I work for the Environmental Protection Agency, and I am on the Energy Star Products Program team at the EPA, um, and I am joined here uh, by Annie King. Annie, can you see the slides? I can. Um, maybe just try going full screen in Zoom if you haven't already, Taylor. Yeah, possibly change your view. I'm okay. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm Annie King. I'm an implementation support contractor through ICF for Energy Star. Um, and I work with Taylor on um, this partnership we're about to introduce to you, as well as other inclusive utility investment um, program mapping. And I do a few other things on the uh, commercial and, and industrial side of Energy Star. It's a huge program, um, and this is one important aspect of it, and we're really excited to, to talk about it with you all here today. Oh, man. Of course, I cannot see it. I don't know what... Um... If you maybe drag, are you able to see all of us panelists and attendees? Yeah, I've changed the view a bunch of times, and what, it, I, what I see, it says that Emily has started screen sharing. I have to do something weird and simply just drag, like expand the box. And that worked because it did go away for me too. And I just clicked and dragged and expanded one of the sides. I'm doing that and it's not. I might just have to leave and come back. Uh, well, well, we'll defer to you. Is it possible that you could open up the slides on your end and and just watch them yourself on your screen? That might be a little clunky because I'm not sure we'll stay paced, but I can try. I well, just so just so Emily knows when to advance to the next slide, if if one of you can cue her. Oh, cool! Someone's using AI to take notes. I love that. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave and come back just um, because I think otherwise I, I'm not gonna be able to keep pace. So hey, give me just a moment. Um, sorry about this. Annie, so that we don't have blank space in our meeting, would you like to tell us some more about the Energy Star Home Upgrade Service Provider Partnership or the Home Upgrade Service uh, itself? Yeah, um, so we're gonna get into all of this um, kind of at the beginning of our presentation here. Um, this partnership actually just launched in June 
So it's very new um, and we're maybe Taylor will address some of this, but if not, we are sort of considering these first few months to be um, sort of a soft launch where we are meeting with um, you know, organizations and groups of organizations such as yourself to sort of introduce this partnership and its um, intended purpose and sort of hear how and if it would be of use to you. Um, Energy Star is a massive brand um, that's been around for a couple of decades and is really unique in that it's owned by the EPA. It was created by the EPA to stand as this um, certification and stamp of approval that this product or this program um, means energy efficiency, right? And mm -hmm. the variety of programs and products that um, are represented by Energy Star um, is quite vast. And now that we've um, created a partnership with community action agencies and community-based organizations in a more broader you know, umbrella sense, um, we are looking to see how the Energy Star brand can be leveraged to help reach the communities that you know so well, right? Um, and we're in a moment of historic investment um, in energy efficiency products and programming. Um, so as the Inflation Reduction Act funding and the Infrastructure and Jobs Act funding is rolled out through rebates, et cetera, um, we wanna be sure that Energy Star is keeping up um, and figuring out how to address the needs of communities um, that have historically been underserved um, and underrepresented when it comes to um, obtaining energy efficiency measures. Um, so this partnership is just one way that we're attempting to um, address those gaps and those barriers. Um, we'll get more into the specifics of how um, we hope to do that. And thanks, yeah. Annie. Welcome. I'm here. Okay, <laughs> here. Um, did you were you able to launch the poll? No, we haven't opened it yet. Do you want to open it? Okay, why don't you start by launching the poll? And I'm still trying to get on, back on camera, but I was able to um, join and I can see the presentation now. So opening the poll. And we have three so, um, that we'll, yeah, go ahead, Annie. Yeah, just three questions are open right now. Um, we're going to direct you to certain ones throughout the presentation because they might be um, more appropriate to answer at a specific time. So kind of point to them as we move, move through it. Great idea to have the poll. Um, I know that among our network and in the general population, Energy Star has a certain amount of name recognition, but the degree to which our network is interacting with Energy Star can vary. And hopefully that'll change after this and hopefully you guys will see value. I wanna just be really clear that we know you guys have a lot on your plate and have to deal with a lot of um, government bureaucracy. Um, what we're here to talk to you about is, is hopefully going to be a value and make your lives easier. That is certainly our goal. Um, but if it anything seems like it's not, um, we'd love to hear that too. So, you know, we want as a federal program to be able to make sure that whatever we're doing is supporting um, everybody um, and helping improve and uh, access and understanding of energy efficiency and Energy Star value across um, our whole country and um, and that we're able to get that message across clearly. We do a lot of research, but um, we can always learn from folks like you and um, and understand, you know, how best to get our messages across. But we, we've been really trying to, um, you know, build resources and some of which we'll cover today, but also want to also hear from you what is most so so hang on for that last question um till the end because hopefully some of the stuff i'm going to show you 
about what we've been doing will give you an idea of the types of things we're doing. I think, like Amy said, not everyone maybe has a lot of familiarity with the program or what we offer, right? We are the blue label on products, um, but what else do we do? Um, we actually have a pretty expansive consumer direct um, marketing. Uh, Taylor, are you able to see the slides yep. yet? Yes. Are I you can. able to see the slide? Um, should we should we move on? We've been on yeah, this little ahead. slide. Yeah. Absolutely. You'll have to cue Emily on. when it's time to advance. Yes. Okay. So um, right, it's a little blue label. There's seven billion products that carry the Energy Star mark. As Annie mentioned, you know, we we have labels on buildings. We have a whole program for commercial industrial buildings, um, industrial plants, and new homes. And where what I'm gonna be talking about is products specifically today. Okay, next. And how products fit into existing homes. Um, of course, they fit into new homes too, but a lot of what we are focused on, on where we're trying to work with community action agencies that are doing weatherization assistance or um, LIHEAP emergency furnace replacement programs, it's all about right serving the existing homes. So we're going to be talking about products and how they apply to existing homes. Uh, we have an extensive partner network. Our stakeholder network continues to grow. Uh, we are um, we are launching uh, two new partnerships this year, one for service providers of home upgrades. Um, that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today, but we're also um, building new partnerships with state energy offices to support the rollout of the Inflation Reduction Act rebates that are all tied to Energy Star products. But we have an extensive network of manufacturers, retailers and utilities. Um, and it's interesting, uh, I think a lot of folks do get confused that it's this federal program that seems mandatory, but it actually is voluntary. It's just um, for over 30 years, been a very successful program that it is pretty, um, you'll find the label in all the product categories that we do cover. Um, but we're really trying to keep energy efficiency simple using this blue mark on products. Next slide. Um, so a lot of you know, noted that you are very or somewhat familiar with the brand. Um, we do regular testing of consumers and over 90% of American households recognize the label and 70% um, of recent purchasers report that it influenced their purchasing decision. So it is a very powerful little label. Um, whether people know exactly what it means or not, uh, the studies do show that it um, helps them in making purchasing decisions. They see it as a trusted label for efficiency um, and helps just helps them make a final decision in purchasing a more efficient product. Um, there's also, um, it's we're, we're doing more and more to associate our brand beyond energy efficiency, but with clean energy, the clean energy transition. So that's part of the evolution of the messaging that goes along with our brand. Um, and we, we do a, a really sizable amount of direct-to-consumer marketing and campaign work. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about a little bit today, just so you get some familiarization about like the direct-to-consumer work that we do and, and how we will be doing even more of that um, tied to these rebates and tied to this home upgrade platform that I'll be talking about today. Um, and what it does is create you know, help create a consistent national conversation. Um, and we have a lot of outreach that we do direct, but we also do a lot through our stakeholder network. So all of our partners can rely on our marketing materials as turnkey. And that's what we hope to provide to any of you who want to partner with us as well, is that we serve up marketing materials that are just easy to plop in and help enhance the stuff, the work that you're already doing. Next slide. Um, there is evidence that that when partner companies partner with Energy Star, it helps boost their perception, their customers' perception, and increase engagement with their customers. Um, there's actually a um, you know a, a, because it's a trusted symbol, partnering with the government, partnering with the um, with the program um, has shown uh, very successful for uh, customer engagement and for. Uh, boards. <laughs> the boards like to see the partnership um, with, with this program as well. Next slide. Some um, samples I wanted to show of the different creative assets. So we 
we are always making sure that, that we are developing creative assets that are appropriate for the time and the media channels that are um, most leveraged by the demographics that we are trying to reach. Um, so what you see is, you know, we do Instagram, YouTube, uh, we do Google, a lot of Google ad placements. We have, um, we have ads that also come on before YouTube videos. So there's, um, we're constantly reevaluating and, and making sure we're meeting people where they are. Next slide. So we do, um, also, you know, as we are making sure that we're reaching everybody, we're we're diving into different demographic groups to understand what their media preferences are um, and where to find them and where to reach them. So if that whether that's re radio or podcasts or Instagram or TikTok, uh, that's what we're always following to make sure we're staying up on the latest trends. So we are always doing this at a national level. So you can think of it as like a way to tap in to what's already happening out there at a local level. Next slide. So um, I've mentioned this program a few times. Um, the Energy Star Home Upgrade is a marketing platform to try to simplify what it means to electrify or to be get ready for the clean energy future, to get your home um, what it needs, the most impactful measures. Um, I think it can be really overwhelming to know what to do for your home um, to uh, to really save energy, right? For a long time, it was change the light bulb. Um, most people, thankfully, have changed their light bulbs. Um, and now you can only get an energy efficient light bulb. So um, that low hanging fruit is now gone. And now what's left are the really much more expensive and challenging items like water heaters and HVAC and getting your home electric ready to support a fully electric home. And so what we created with the Energy Star Home Upgrade is trying to simplify what that journey looks like. Um, and we see this as a really nice complement to both um, what's what we're seeing with the Inflation Reduction Act rebates, but also with um, the Weatherization Assistance Program. So the Energy Star Home Upgrade is six measures that cover, I mentioned HVAC, water heating, temperature control, attic insulation, that also doesn't exclude home um, overall insulation and ceiling, but it's the most impactful part of the insulation, and windows, and um, anything you need to do to support that in a home that might not be already prepped um, to, to manage that electric load. Next slide. Part of the, the materials that we've developed to help customers understand what this journey looks like, um, they can be made all at once or they can made over time based on what the home needs at the time. So this declaration sheet, this is not an Energy Star certified home. This is not an Energy Star certified retrofit. It's not an Energy Star certified renovation. This is simply um, a, a declaration that you have made these impactful changes to your home and a record that people can keep so they know what products have been put in their home and um, they can have, if they're um, eligible for tax credits, it can be helpful for filing that, um, but it's a helpful reference and it can be um, helpful for them understanding what needs to be done in the future and what value add they've made to their home that might be not as clear. Next slide. The Energy Star Home Upgrade, we do um, plan to leverage it in a, in a variety of ways as a national campaign marketing platform, as a framework to talk about Inflation Reduction Act and tax incentive rebates. Um, tax credits, sorry, I kind of jumbled those all together, as tax incentives and home rebates, home appliance rebates. Um, it's a helpful framework to help to contextualize what all that means for an individual home. Um, and um, because all the recent legislation is tied back to Energy Star products, it helps. Um, we're going to be developing 
even more tools than we have already to help support understanding and execution of those rebates alongside DOE. So um, helping people understand the tax credits, we're both working with the IRS and DOE to help this process be more straightforward for consumers so they know, you know what they're eligible for, what, um, what, it, what products are available to them, and all those details and help them understand where to go and who to trust and all those things. So that's part of what we're doing with building out these partnerships. We are also using this as a mechanism to address energy inequity for existing homes, as Annie mentioned. Next slide. Next slide. So more of the materials that we've developed. Um, we have a tool, a web-based tool, where you can kind of navigate through the different measures to learn about them. Um, there is, um, you know, you can learn about the benefits, you can learn about the technology, you can find certified models, you can calculate potential savings, learn about rebates or financial incentives, uh, find manufacturers and service providers. It's just kind of this one-stop home to and that we're going to be building out even more as we build out new partnerships. So what we um, we've this launched last year, and we launched just in June the partnership for service providers that can do most, if not all, of these measures. Next slide. So that's something really important just to note, like understanding that um, your weatherization programs might range in covering some of these, if not all, that's not a requirement that you have to cover all these measures in your program. Um, we still think it can be a complementary program to what you guys are doing with weatherization. And I'd love to hear feedback on that. Um, so I mentioned we do campaigns. This is just some more examples of the types of campaigns that we do and objectives is really to build the demand and facilitate adoption of Energy Star Home Upgrades. Um, we're really going to drive people to that website so they can learn more and and get them connected with service providers. So we already have um, some web content now that helps people understand that they may be eligible for free services through their um, weatherization assistance program right now. Um, and we do regular research. So we use the research that we've done to make sure we're hitting um, the demographics in a way that resonates with them in the place that they're going to get information and um, trusted resources as well. Um, we're doing Facebook and Google Display Networks is the primary for this campaign. Next slide. The Partner Toolkit comes with all of these types of things so you can do your own local uh, use of these materials. Um, banners, web banners, um, ad placements, things like that. If you want to focus on certain measures or certain messages, we have the same materials with slightly different messages that have all been consumer tested. So you find the right imagery based on our little library and the right word combination that works for you. That's the type of turnkey materials that we offer to our partners. Next slide. Energy Star Home Upgrade for All. So this is, the Energy Star Home Upgrade is a national platform, a national campaign, but Annie and I are really focused on building out partnerships with folks that are serving the low to moderate income households. It's so important that they get extra support um, because we know that you're all stretched so thin and that these are the homes that are so busy with meeting their basic needs that thinking about retrofitting or upgrading their home is not necessarily top priority. They're just trying to get through the day. Um, but everyone needs to be a part of this and we need to be able to support everybody in getting their homes to a safer, more comfortable and efficient place. And so, you know, we are really, really focused on how we can best support that transition. And a lot of that has to do with partnering with, um, community action agencies and community-based organizations that are really serving those communities and helping ease the process for folks and optimizing whatever free programs or financing might be available to these households um, and, and really helping the process um, 
help helping simplify the process and either bringing them free or debt-free solutions to getting these upgrades. Next slide. Um, some of our research that I wanted to highlight um, identified some um, striving energy and tenders. Um, so when we break down these different demographics, they kind of, we <laughs> they come with like kind of a characterization. And so this group of, um, you know, 10% of US households with uh, the ages between 35 and 44, incomes between 30,000 and 75,000, renters more likely, single or one or more children at home, some college, black, African-American, Hispanic, urban, metro mix, small town. These, these features kind of came together as this, this is a, a really important chunk of the US population that really wants to save energy and maybe doesn't have the bandwidth or um, then the, the funds to do it, um, to make the type of upgrades, but they're interested and they're very engaged and um, they, wanna, they, they want to make the right choice. They wanna make the best choice for the future for their children. They wanna make the best choice um, for the environment. Next slide. Amy, do you want to say anything about the striving energy contenders? I know you love. I actually just posted something in the chat. <laughs> yes. Um, my message to our network is striving energy and tenders are the wave of the future. I think that in this group, these are the folks that we're going to be counting on to bring in to bring new bodies in to apply for weatherization. Um, this is the changing face of our community action um, service uh, customer population. These are the folks who may not think of themselves as low income, but they are in fact on the cusp of low income, depending on how you describe it or how you define it. And they are the ones who may be out there looking to shop for certain things for their home or apartment to improve their energy efficiency that they could get for free through weatherization or through some of the other energy programs that our network runs. So I think the striving energy and tenders are the most interesting piece of all of this market research that EPA has done. Cool. And just this shows how we've looked at the data about how like the their media usage compared to the rest of, of uh, other segments. And so, you know, we there is there is a like a noticeable trend of social media, right? Um, everyone uses mobile. We we know that that's a really popular. Um, but it's I think, you know, it all helps support our social media um, strategy. Next slide. We've also, you know, looked at where everyone shops as well. So it's really important for us to see that Walmart is a leading retailer for this demographic, this group. Next slide. So um, just want to walk through how we're currently addressing some barriers, and that's how we provide our credible, widely recognized, easy to understand designation for um, products with our Energy Star mark, our blue mark. We, um, behind that mark is objective criteria and measurement standards um, that we keep up to date on a regular basis to make sure that we are designating the top performing products in the market, but that also can be offered at multiple price points. I know that doesn't always work out perfectly. And sometimes the Energy Star products can be the more expensive ones, um, even though they saved more over time. And that can be a tricky thing for programs. Um, but it's always a tough balance that we try to try to try to control for in our process. Um, providing marketing tools and national campaigns to help cons educate consumers and involving our partners that work directly with their constituents to spread the word. We our tax credit web pages like the most popular web page on our um, in our in our system. Uh, um, it is crazy active around tax season. Um, it is the predominantly reliable place for um, tax credits. I recognize that is not always applicable to folks at the lowest part of the income brackets. Um, they unfortunately aren't eligible for tax credits, but um, but it is it is a helpful resource and we have rebate finder that we are building out even more as we um, 
as the rebates from the Inflation Reduction Act roll out. So we help people connect with rebates. We have a best value finder um, that helps people sort products by cost and tap into any local rebates when they put their zip code in that their utility might offer. Next slide. So about this partnership, um, we are the EPA's Energy Star program is partnering with companies and community-based organizations, including community action agencies, who function as a concierge for energy efficiency home upgrade services to bring the benefits of energy savings and the clean energy future to American households. So we are working together to build that network to accelerate adoption of the Energy Star Home Upgrade and um, an opportunity for you know, lowering bills, but also connecting with um, a national message for improving home comfort and health. Next slide. Um, so I've covered a lot of this. I, I one of a couple other things that I just want to tap into that I know NCAP does a great job of as well, supporting braiding financial resource best practices. Um, that's something we're going to be doing more support of. There's a lot more funding opportunities out there now than ever before, but there's also a as you guys all know, a tangled web of rules around which funds can be used together on a project. Um, we're not doing the job of, you know, that of weatherization assistance program. Uh, I think you guys do that great with NCAP and in concert with DOE's weatherization assistance program, but outside of that, um, helping demystify the federal funding and state funding opportunities is something we are committed to doing to support um, our partners with. Um, we are big on facilitating information exchanges through webinars and one-on-one -on -one and bringing stakeholders together. Um, we have a, our annual partner meeting. I know you guys just had a big convention in Atlanta. We're going to Atlanta at the end of this month to convene partners and start the conversation about um, the Energy Star Home Upgrade in light of the Inflation Reduction Act, working with our new partners, expanding our partnerships to advance um, our common goals. And, um, and the last one is, you know, we're, oh, you know, working with our partner network, but also assisting educating Americans. Next slide. Why does EPA want to partner with community action agencies? Um, well, our mission is to make it easy for all Americans to benefit from energy efficiency. And we want to ensure that our market transformation efforts account for the unique barriers faced by your community. We recognize the decision-making processes in the energy sector are not always inclusive or conducive to equitable outcomes for communities. And we wanna make sure we're partnering with folks that are absolutely at the forefront of community action and uh, hearing from you to help influence the work that we do at the federal level. Next slide. Is Amy still on? I know Amy had to leave, but Amy uh, is. She did. Unfortunately, she's uh, headed to another webinar. Uh, so, okay. all right. Mm -hmm. Well, this was this was <laughs> this is her slide, but I think. Um, but you know, I can take it if you like. That's Emily, entirely I'm not sure fine. If you want to take it? Sure. Um, so when when I spoke to Amy about you know what about this partnership and why community action agencies might want to partner with, she lists out these six things. Yeah, so the biggest reason, so, oh, by the way, for those of you uh, I didn't get to catch with the introductions at the beginning, I'm Emily Dreiswack, I'm the program associate uh, at NCAP uh, for the Energy Partnerships Project. I am Amy's underling. Um, I come from community action myself, so, uh, Amy and I have been talking about this, and one of the biggest reasons that community action agencies might want to partner with Energy Star for these uh, for this program would be to harness kind of the brand identity, the marketing power that Energy Star already has. So you can amplify the existing weatherization program with these brand assets. Um, another reason would be to identify or reach target areas or demographics, which kind of have low community action engagement, which is what, what we were talking about with the striving energy intenders, people who are almost on the cusp, but maybe don't know that they're on the cusp, but, but are eligible for these services 
and um, this increased marketing can help you uh, reach out to them. In addition, uh, part of it is identifying program or uh, properties, excuse me, residential properties that are newer and maybe more energy efficient inherently, but are less likely to be deferred and more likely to help reduce the cost per unit, uh, the average cost per unit uh, per agency. Uh, in addition, um, it could help reduce competition or yes, competition from the energy efficiency program marketing that could undermine um, weatherization eligibility. So other programs states might have that using their measures might uh, make a home no longer eligible for weatherization. And I can speak from working in New York, if uh, a client uses NYSERDA um, services, it might leave nothing for weatherization left to do because you can't re-insulate something once it's already been done. Uh, and building on the marketing aspect of this, another reason for community action agencies and um, Energy Startup Partner would be the marketing to prospective purchasers and plan writers. So it could be, um, excuse me, it could be helpful to let the um, people who are making these policies know what kind of uh, appliances and things are helpful and best practices for installation in their uh, weatherization measures. And of course, the last thing as the um, new programs are rolling out, Bill and IRA or IIJA, depending on how you refer to it, um, as those policies are being made, further partnerships and opportunities to develop this interprogram coordination can become available. So it's it can be beneficial Thanks. for CAAs to be a partner. Thanks so much, Emily. And sorry to put you on the spot there. No worries. Great, great job. Next slide. This is, we're coming to the end. Um, so there, there is like an application process. Um, one of the things I wanted to cover is like, so the partnership is mostly about um, brand preservation. <laughs> um, so, you know, there, there's the, the exchange is, is a, like once you're a partner, you get to use our logos. And so you need to sign something to make sure that you're committing to use our all of our branding information in line with our brand guidelines. So that's what like, at the most of it, the crux of the partnership agreement is about, um, but there's also commitments that we have devised specific for organizations that are supporting this partnership. The The nice news is that you all are on like a fast track. You all meet all of them. They're designed with your organizations in mind. Um, and so meeting those commitments should be a you know cake because you're already doing more than enough through the weatherization assistance program. And so I think that's really important context for the agencies to know you guys are kind of gonna be treated differently than other organizations or companies applying for this partnership simply because of the work that you do and the way your organizations were created. Um, you're already under enough. <laughs> um, so, so that is um, the commitments you, like you certainly should review them, but, um, but they were designed with community action agencies in mind, so it should be no problem to meet all those. And really, we're like the other thing that we're looking for is how how do you think you'll use our marketing materials? Um, so we know a little bit about, about that, um, and that doesn't have to be a really like a five point plan or anything really formal. That could be a conversation with Annie or I or a couple emails. It's it's um, I I want to really demystify what we're asking here. It might look like a lot, but on the end. Um, for community action agencies specifically, it's um, the it's not it should not be a heavy lift, and it was really intended to not be a heavy lift for community action agencies. And then, um, so there's a link here if you're interested, but also like, you're uh, please do reach out to me or Annie to talk about it if you're interested in um, joining as a partner. Um, next slide. I think we're we're just about wrapping up here, and so we can open it up for questions. Um, after I read 
kind of, we go over the roles just to kind of understand like what we're doing, what we expect from partners, um, kind of where that synergy happens. Um, we can um, go back to those polls and you guys, if you have any change thoughts or additional kind of um, feedback on the use of the marketing materials or what, what resources that I haven't mentioned that you think could be useful to you, um, take a look at those polls uh, now and, and, and give us your feedback. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm repeating myself, so I'm not going to read all of these, but I, I think really just knowing that we're here to support you and make your jobs easier. We're not asking much of you. Um, you're do already doing a lot. And so um, to the extent that you find the partnership valuable and the exchange of information, that's what we're hoping to get out of this partnership. All right, next slide is the end. So can we go, can we pull up the, the polls or I'm, I'm sure I can look at them on my screen, right? Oh, there we go, great. Um, so if we scroll down, All right, so there is some interest in the marketing materials, and most folks are not sure about um, maybe, and, and that's something certainly um, what kind of uh, resources might be useful, or um, certainly if that is not clear right now, we'd love for you to think about it. Um, now that you kind of heard about our new marketing platform and what we're trying to do, um, thinking about what makes sense for what you do. Um, and maybe if there's any missing pieces, um, you know, one example that was raised on uh, another conversation I was having around this was, um, you know, how-to videos for maintenance of uh, heat pump equipment, that sort of thing. Um, because when you're introducing new technology, uh, not everyone has the uh, ability to handhold all of that um, technical details uh, with their with their customers and clients. So um, that was one great piece of feedback we received for a resource that would be useful, like a uh, how to manual, how to videos about uh, heat pump maintenance. If you want to. Um, I, ha I haven't looked in the chat if there's any questions coming in, but if anyone wants to just take themselves off mute and um, ask any questions or, you know, comments, anything. No questions in the question and answer box. Mm -hmm. I cannot hear you, Louise. I cannot hear you, unfortunately. Maybe speak more directly into your microphone. I'm definitely interested in partnership. It's really fuzzy. Think about interested in partnering with something. If you can maybe shoot it in the chat, it might be more easy for us to, to address it. I think one interesting question that would um, be good to hear from everyone about is just the aspect of marketing, like in your materials um, that you create for weatherization. Um, when you're trying to reach the members of your community uh, that you want to take advantage of WAP. Um, what are you seeing as kind of a difficulty in creating those materials? And do you think having, um, you know, information created by Energy Star, would that be helpful? Um, or, or literally just the logo, um, how could you potentially see um, you know, EPA, Energy Star, helping you in that aspect of, of weatherization specifically.
Hi. Um, I'm trying to envision a, a marketing flyer or something that we rely on, we could rely on that has Energy Star listed on it. What would we be able to tell folks about you're, you're about to, your home is about to be weatherized and therefore I think you said earlier, we wouldn't be able to provide them with any specific Energy Star home designation, which I'm not super familiar with, but um, like to, to, to piggyback, like you're trying to help us to do, I work for a local weatherization program in Michigan. And um, where, where, would, where would we be able to connect those dots? It's, it's like, hey, you're about to go through this federal program and look, here's Energy Star is gonna help you me You can complete. provide you can mm -hmm. provide the energy star declaration sheet so you can yeah. use that so you can say you know here here's kind of it's like a little bonus like i think especially when you're making all these invisible updates like it's like oh great i'm 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 glad i got that done and you know i hope my energy bills go down and i'm more comfortable but like what do i have to show for it this declaration is something you can leave behind so they have um you know a more simplified record of the work that's been done as it relates to the Energy Star Home Upgrade. So it's kind of like a certificate mm -hmm. in a way, or, but we don't call it a certificate, we call it a declaration. So it's it's just something they can show that will leave them with a good feeling and a, an explanation of like the really high impact things that, that you've done for them that are also, that are part of the weatherization program, but they're also part of the Energy Star Home Upgrade. So yeah, thanks for finding that slide. So do you see this? It's a P fillable PDF that you can print off and leave behind, and you can also send share the digital file. Yeah, that that could work. I mean, they nobody would know the difference between a declaration and a certificate anyway, as long as it says Energy Star. Exactly. <laughs> it's a it's it's like I think you know it's it's funny. Some of our research showed people's brains light up when they see the mark. Hmm. Like it it gives a warm fuzzy feeling. Um that it's like, oh, I'm doing something good for the environment. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, one kind of stat, I don't know if we mentioned earlier, um, but that these upgrades tend to happen in times of crisis when something breaks. So if, you know, you have gone through, um, you know, weatherization upgrades, you get this sheet and you see, okay, these are the areas where I don't have upgrades. When something does fail, maybe you'll be more inclined to, you know, um, search for the Energy Star label um, to know that you know you're getting a trusted product. But also, you know, as you budget for energy efficiency upgrades, these are the areas that you can you can focus on and look for. Yeah, and you can use this to help them plan. So, for example, if the weatherization program wasn't going to either be able to cost cost effectively cover one of the measures. Um, and it wasn't super close to failing, but it like is in a couple of years, you can use the declaration sheet to kind of mark that out. And so use it as a helpful roadmap for your customers as a lead behind to say is you're going to want to, you're, you're going to want to replace your water heater in a couple of years. And this is the, like, you should start thinking about a heat pump water heater. Um, it's the most efficient option. It's going to cost a little bit more, but save you more in the long run. It's a tricky thing to but but the more you prepare for it the better um that's the kind of um or like you know there might be a rebate available for you um through your utility or through the government you know or well i guess it's through the states um you know so the the way that they can navigate it you might not be able to cover it at that moment through your weatherization program uh, but you can give them leave them with a, a plan for um for pursuing the other elements and help them get prepared for what they need or what to ask for. Yeah, a lot of these things, because they're new technologies, they're just not on the forefront of people's minds. They're also not on the trucks, right? <laughs> they're not, it's like heat pumps are not always on the rolling truck. So especially with the emergency replacements, that's not usually what gets installed and so if people know oh i i'm i might need to get this new technology um there's a rebate out there for it um you know particularly with the home energy uh, home electrification and appliance rebates like those are going to be very generous to be able to cover most of the cost of those heat pumps so um it's an exciting time to be able to bring 
this technology to people who otherwise couldn't afford it. So, Taylor, thank you very much for the presentation. It was an excellent presentation. Um, but you, you and Annie both brought up something that we encounter all the time: is it's not at the distributor or on the truck. So to get it in an emergency situation where the water heater has failed and they need something within hours, a 48 hour or three week wait is not going to get that Energy Star product in that house. And that means a 10 or 15 or sometimes a 20 year wait until that is going to be again. So my question is really what is there a part of Energy Star that's working on trying to get more of those units stocked? Because, as you said, sometimes heat pumps, they may cost, a heat pump water heater may cost a little bit more. But with utility and state rebates, it is usually the same price or less than a, a regular electric hot water heater. So, but I know as working for a utility that we don't find the distributors will even carry them. It's it's a ten or ten to twenty one day wait minimum to get it, so you have to plan for, it or be living yeah. willing to live with a leaking water heater or something like that until it's replaced. And nobody, yeah, nobody wants it. And, and are you do you also do like the emergency replacement stuff? So, um, as I, I run our our energy efficiency program for a utility, so we're oh, okay. always ready and waiting for. Um, our community action agencies and Habitat for Humanity to, to contact us to say we have or a need or that. So we're working to promote the heat pumps, the heat pump water heaters, um, induction cooktops and all of that um, for our utility, but at the same time working with the community action agencies to improve weatherization. And all that. So that's why I, I get the secondhand story of, well, I would have replaced it with this, but it wasn't available for three months. Yeah, well, and that that's that's a real that's a, absolutely a real issue right now. And um, we have supply chain issues, we have uh, work shortage issues that are real real issues right now. That, these are the kind of things that we are working on. DOE is working on you. We're working on it from federal level um, to change that right to, to the, there it's it's slow moving unfortunately we have work groups with the main leading manufacturers that meet regularly trying to work this out that all i can say is it's a slow process but there is work being done and the more people demand it the more you continue to ask for it and the community action agencies continue to ask for it the more that is on repeat and the distributors aren't getting the sales um from the old stuff they're being forced to get the new stuff like that's how the change happens it's it's slow it's frustrating I totally hear it um you know when you one thing we explore is you know when you make big purchases or you make commitments if a utility or or even a, an agency could make a commitment say I'm will I'm willing to buy this many of these heat pumps I have a lot of projects lined up I anticipate needing you know, then then when they see the money, they they know, OK, these are guaranteed sales. I will get these products in stock. You know, those those are the kind of things that we expect to happen. And with the Inflation Reduction Act, really, really trying to emphasize heat pumps, um, doing their best, you know, to really hone in on that, to really be specific on that demand. Um, that, that is the hope that, it, that these will these market forces will really start to change. So, no, thank you very much for that, Taylor. What, uh, maybe a, a, a piece that could help drive the customer asking the contractors would be some of your marketing pieces saying, uh, to what Aaron said, planning ahead. Like with the declaration sheet, if you're going to need a heat pump or, or you're going to need a water heater in two years, start asking for it or maybe include that in some of the marketing pieces. Like think ahead because... We also encounter a lot of homes that have 30 and 40 year old furnaces that should have been replaced 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just human nature to, if it's working, don't, don't mess with it. So, yeah. but maybe poke the bear a little bit and say, check the date, just like you would on a gallon of milk or, or anything mm -hmm. else, check the date of when it was made 
and see if it needs to be replaced with a high efficiency energy star product. So just a thought for maybe a, a marketing campaign that would reach that customer to help drive that those distributors and contractors. Yeah, thanks for that. No, nope. thank you very much. And have a great afternoon. That reminds me of uh, Andrew. Uh, we we had a long running campaign for refrigerator recycling. Um, it was all on check. If if your refrigerator is more than ten years old, it's time to replace it. And uh, I think it it is a hard thing for people to even know where to find the age of their appliance. Um, but it is it it's it's important message to get out there that you uh, we do have some campaigns around water heaters, especially because you don't want to be in that mess. And on the appliance recycling piece, we actually have been running 10 events this year just for refrigerators and freezers. <laughs> and our average age is close to 26 years old. Wow. So uh, I'd continue your 10-year your campaign. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, what utility do you work for? Um, Upper Peninsula Power Company in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Okay. We are, we're a small utility with about 50,000 customers, but um, we cover a large, almost half of the Upper Peninsula, which is 4,400 square miles or something like that. Oh, thanks so. for joining. No, thank you very much. Got about three minutes left. Have time for one good topic of discussion if anyone has it. As we leave, I will just put my contact information in the chat and the link to the learn more about the partnership. If anyone wants to follow up, I realize I didn't put my contact information in the slide deck, but also Emily and Amy can always put you in touch. And the home upgrade. Thanks everyone for joining today. And the last link. The last link in there is the link to the Energy Star Home Upgrade Service Provider Partnership, which, uh, as I mentioned, is specially crafted with community action agencies in mind. Certainly um, reach out to me if you have any questions. If you, if you take a look and anything strikes you, just feel free to reach out.